a reading guide to Philip K. Dick. Stay tuned. A mad, insane acid trip of a book. I remember when I purchased my first published story, uh, somebody said to me, do you read that kind of stuff? And I said, Madam, I not only read it, I write it. I think if you just read one book, you don't get this right away, but when you read a number of Philip K. Dicks in a row, you have a sense that there's a haunting, that there's something else going on, that there, there is uh, another element in the stories. And a lot of people have said, okay, it's the dead twin uh, motif, if you will, which comes from something that happened uh, to Dick when he was very, very young. I think he was always haunted by the fact that he lost this sister uh, before he could ever know her. She died within a couple of months of their twin birth. And in a family life that was quite difficult and in some ways quite cold, I think the vanishing of this twin sister stood for the missing warmth or the missing feminine presence you know, that um, he may have felt deprived of. It's as if the, the reality that Philip K. Dick uh, lives in it has somehow got a great darkness in it. And in that great darkness comes out a great deal of paranoia. Uh, but it all seems to stem from that incident. Dick can be a very frustrating writer to read, and it'll put people off. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that said, there are, there are a handful of books that are more capably written and so can be sometimes used as the persuaders. Oh, well, try this one, you know. Can you give me some examples? I'd say Man in the High Castle is the best entry point for people. I was in a hospital and uh, lying there pumped full of antibiotics to cure an infection I had. And also um, um, Oxycontin. Woo! And uh, so lying there, the only thing that made sense to read was Philip K. Dick. So I made sure that a bunch of my Philip K. Dick books were brought to me. And I read a bunch of them again, and uh, what I realized was the best one, the best one is the Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch, a mad, insane acid trip of a book. It's beyond description. One must read it. You know? <laughs> I probably read about 20 Philip K. Dick novels, and I don't know how many short stories. I mean, he was so prolific as a short story writer. He was a pulp writer, so his work comes out of that tradition. So he was just bashing it out, and there's a real you're just carried along when you read those stories. And a lot of the short stories are really, really great. But for me, the two novels that stand up there are The Three Stigmata, Palmer Edwich, and uh, Man in a High Castle. My favorite Philip K. Dick novel is uh, Vallis, Vallis uh, which was one of his last books. And um, even though uh, Man in a High Castle is, is acclaimed for good reason by, uh, by Philip K. Dick, this is a book, Vallis, that is so mind-bending that you end up a different person on the other side of it. He have, may have seen it as a religious experience, and indeed it may have been. If he experienced it that way, then it was, but uh, it looks suspiciously like mental illness. It's Philip K. Dick really writing about himself. He's a character in the book who's suffering from a disjointed personality in which he doesn't realize that he's talking about himself. And this character is trying to figure out the meaning of existence and he believes that God is an orbiting satellite that saved his life from sir, his son from from disease and death and Philip K. Dick may have actually believed this was true he started seeing incandescent pink lights one night and uh, uh, oh it's terribly complex and uh, one thing he seemed to learn at this time was that we are still living in ancient Rome and it just looks like it's a contemporary world but in fact there's still a Roman emperor behind all of this, and uh, he became obsessed with trying to figure out this event that happened to him. And he just dug into it and dug into it and dug into it, trying to make it make some sense to him. And it, you know, it looked like obsession to me. He is the writer who most approximates the experience of taking a hallucinatory drug. And the reason that he's compared to film and to rock and roll so frequently is that, like those other mediums, his work has an immersive quality. When you read one of his books, you're um, drawn into an overwhelming sensory experience of, of hallucination. If you look at him in historical context, he seems to be the guy who makes the bridge from American pulp writing to 
uh, a certain kind of mainstream. Um, what's interesting is the mainstream rejected him in the in the 70s, you know, 60s, 70s, and 80s. People hadn't really figured out what Dick was doing. But because his themes were the government is corrupt, well, you should be paranoid, the world is not what you believe, suddenly these themes are very, very present to us now. And you see the influence of, those, of his ideas everywhere. People would say to me, well, why don't you write something serious? Why do you write science fiction? Write something serious. By that they meant important. Nevertheless, I did as, as well as I could. I wrote the, the most profound, the most imaginative novel I could and just floated it out into the world and hoped that eventually it would receive an audience. Truly an amazing, crazy, and prolific life. Thank you for watching, everybody. I'm Rachel Harry. Go to our website, booktelevision.com. We'll see you next week. I'm Kim Clark Chambers.